hour, so. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. On behalf of all of us at Grife, welcome to the Discover Grife webinar series. We truly appreciate that during this time, while we are not able to visit with you in person, we still have the opportunity to share with you about Grife and our product lines. We hope you will continue to find our webinars of value and we hope that you will share with your colleagues. Today, we will focus on how a steel drum is made and discuss our global steel portfolio. My name is Jennifer Maroli and I'm a marketing intern based in Ohio. I will be a senior at Ohio State studying marketing and I will be assisting Cheryl Caudill with moderating this event today. Cheryl Caudill is responsible for marketing communications for our rigid industrial packaging and services division and has over 25 years of marketing experience. Allow me to briefly introduce our panel of presenters today. First, we have Alan Sersikova, who is the global product manager responsible for steel drums and is based in France. He has a background in metallurgy and mechanics. He joined Blagden Packaging in 1985 and held many roles there before it was acquired by Greif in 2006. Since then, he has been active in operations management and then product management of steel drums. Baron Golterman has been with Greif for 33 years in various roles from engineering to plant manager. Baron is currently responsible for directing our engineering teams in EMEA and APAC. Philippe Marti has held various sales manager and director roles during his 19 year career with Greif. He is currently the global commercial excellence director for our RIPS division and is also based in France. Finally, Brian Hurett is our director of engineering for RIPS North America. Brian joined Greif in 2011. He has held various positions within the engineering organization. He currently leads the North American engineering team that provides plant support on products, processes, and capital execution. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. You will find a chat button where you can submit your questions to the panelists. Please feel free to submit your questions at any time during the presentation. We will have time at the end to answer your questions. We will be recording the webinar to share with those who cannot attend. Our agenda for today will be as follows. We will go over a description of steel drums, discuss how a drum is made, review the Greif value proposition, and finally, we will close with your questions. Now, I will pass it over to Alain to begin. Yes, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, so let's uh, have a look quickly at the different type of drum specifications. Uh, we find a lot of uh, different specifications in the steel drums market. Uh, the main uh, global standard is a well-known 55 US gallon drums, which is called in uh, the other part of the world 216 liter type uh, that you can find in a tight-head or open-head versions. Uh, that's uh, typically the drums we call large drums. Uh, this is a very uh, worldwide standard. It's probably one of uh, the most uh, standard product in terms of industrial packaging compared to plastic drums on IBCs, for instance. Uh, besides the standard drums, we have a full range of different sizes uh, with different volume, different age, diameters, and different shapes, what we call the small and intermediate steel drums. So let's have a look now at the different capacities. So if we are talking about the small and intermediate drums, this is clearly not a standard uh, packaging. Uh, every country, every manufacturer has his own standard and we can find uh, from 20 to 160 liters, a wide varieties of uh, capacity. And here I just uh, put the most standards uh, be between these uh, uh, different ca capacities. Uh, besides the small and uh, intermediate drums, we have again the large drums, which is a 55 US gallon, uh, which is typically the uh, 216 liters that you can find everywhere on the planet. Uh, it's really a global product. Uh, the specifications are exactly the same in North America, in Europe, in South America, in China, everywhere. And this drum has been also uh, developed with different versions to have higher capacities 
and we can find now six standards up to 250 liters. Uh, in terms of openings, there are two uh, big families. Uh, one for liquid is uh, the classical tight head drums that you can find with two bungs for liquids, one bung of two inches and a three quarter bung. Uh, and uh, the open head drums, uh, which is uh, closed with a cover and uh, with a closing ring, uh, mainly for solid and past products or very viscous products like paint, for instance. In terms of internal protections, uh, the most common drum is the plain drums uh, for non-aggressive products, which are compatible with the steel, with the plain steel. So that's the case, for instance, for lubricants, solvents, and uh, paints, and uh, many other type of uh, products. Uh, if the product is not compatible with the plain steel, then we have a full range of uh, different internal coatings. Uh, which gives some uh, mechanical performance and mainly a good chemical compatibility with the product you want to fill. And we have a wide variety of uh, coatings that I will explain a bit later. Uh, besides this, we have also uh, some protection with plastic bags. So we have the standard polyethylene plastic bags, but we have also for food approved drums, uh, aseptic bags. That's the case for instance for the tomato market. And uh, finally, we have uh, composite drums, which is basically made of uh, plastic drums uh, with a uh, high density polyethylene, which is inserted in the steel drums. So the plastic drums is giving uh, the chemical compatibility and the steel drums is giving is high uh, mechanical performance. And so the combination uh, is uh, perfect for very, very dangerous uh, products, which are not compatible with steel. In terms of uh, internal coating, so uh, Greif has developed uh, during uh, the last years uh, many different linings that we are producing ourselves uh, in our plant in, uh, in the Netherlands. So we have developed different linings to fit with all types of products. So we have many three different resins. We have the phenolic resins, which is uh, very good for acid products. Uh, we have the epoxy phenolic resins, which is uh, very good for alkaline product. And we have the uh, last one is the phenoxy phenolic, which, is, uh, which has been developed for other specific products. So this, uh, all these uh, linings are available in different colors. So we have a full range of uh, different uh, linings. Uh, they are, most of them are food approved and they are uh, below the limit of uh, BPA. Uh, but they are still containing some uh, percentage of uh, BPA, but below the limit uh, which is given by the legislations. Uh, as it was not enough uh, for the baby food, as you probably know, uh, most of uh, the regions have defined a specific uh, legislation for baby food and the BPA is just forbidden. We cannot have any trace of BPA. And for that, we have developed a range of uh, BPA free linings uh, with the three different colors uh, that we call RDL 100, 101 and 102 to fit this purpose. Uh, to help our customers, we have also developed what we call the packaging advice, which is in fact uh, a questionnaire that our sales uh, teams are uh, filling with the customers to define which product you want to fill. And so our engineers, our chemical engineers can give some advices to, to say, okay, for this type of product, the best steel drums is this one and the best uh, lining is this one. Uh, this packaging advice is not only available for steel drums, but is also available for any kind of industrial packaging that uh, Greif can produce. And so it's also valid for IDCs and plastic drums. Uh, besides the standard drums that we just uh, discussed, we have also uh, some special steel drums which are really designed for very specific applications. One of uh, the most common in terms of quantity is the conical large drums, uh, which is uh, mainly used for the tomato business. So we are filling tomato paste in it or food paste. And the big advantage of uh, the conical drum for this application is that we can produce uh, and store uh, during all the year and store a huge quantity of drums just before the season is starting, the crop season. 
and so the customer can store a huge quantity of drums and uh, you know that the uh, tomato crop is just lasting uh, between one and two months maximum but they are using millions of drums and so they really need to have a huge storage of uh, empty drums that's the reason of uh, the conical shape uh, we have also a range of uh, stainless steel drums, uh, again, for specific applications. So there are many used for food, pharmaceuticals, or nuclear waste. We have also a range of uh, salvage drums, uh, which are uh, huge drums able to contain a standard large drums uh, when it is damaged or when the product is too dangerous to be uh, uh, transported in a normal drum. And then we have uh, bitumen drums, which are really dedicated to bitumen. So it's, it's a very light drums uh, and specifically designed for sea containers and to contain bitumen. In terms of material, uh, steel drum is basically made of steel. 99% of the weight of uh, large drums is just made of steel. Uh, so the steel uh, commonly used is a cold wall steel for the bottom, the body and the top. And uh, we have a wide variety of thickness from 0.5 millimeter to 1.5 millimeter. Uh, the most common, let's say, is between 0.8 and 1 millimeter. Uh, we also use uh, galvanized steel for the closures, uh, mainly for the bunks and for the closing rings. The 1% remaining is uh, made of other materials. And then we are talking about paint, ink, internal lining, gasket, uh, sometimes some stickers or caps plastic caps, but it's only in terms of weight, it's only 1% of uh, on the total weight of the drums. So uh, as it is made, 99% uh, made of steel, uh, the large drums is uh, fully uh, re recyclable, or we can recondition uh, the steel drums to make a recon drum, or uh, if the drum is not good enough to be reconditioned, we can always recycle the steel, and as you know, steel is 100% recyclable, so that, that makes uh, large steel drums one of the most sustainable pa industrial packaging. In terms of customization, of course, the steel drums can be painted any color you want. So we can uh, generally, we can put uh, three to five different colors on the, on the drums. We can also customize with a simple or complex screening. The difference is simple screening, we can only put uh, one color per band. In complex screening, we can put uh, two different colors per band. And uh, recently, we have developed, uh, mainly in Europe, uh, the image printing, which uh, allow us to, uh, to print any kind of image on the large steel drums. So that's what we call the drums 360. In terms of customization, uh, we all graph drums are equipped with a thrasher closure system, which are very well known to be a very safe uh, product. Uh, and so we are using the full range of the thrasher products in the means the steel plugs, the plastic plugs, the steel and the plastic caps. And we are also using more and more the tamper evidence solutions proposed by thrasher, which are for instance, embossed caps, or QR code caps or even a UV ink logo on the caps. So all the solutions proposed by Treasure are of course proposed to our customers. Okay, so that was basically the main specification for steel drums. Now I will pass the floor to Berend who will explain a bit more in details how we produce a steel drums. Berend, up to you. Thank you, Alain. And thank you all participating in this webinar. You have seen a large range of steel drums that Grives offers, and now I'll explain to you how these drums are made. The main components are made out of cold rolled steel. This is steel that meets the performance requirements of the global industry standards. We buy steel coils, or big rolls if you want, and we cut that steel in sheets and discs. These sheets and discs are formed into the drum's main components, the drum body, the top and the bottom. How does that work? We will now show you how. Next. The steel coils that we receive can sometimes weigh up to 30 tons. That equals the maximum load of normal trucks. For those so-called white coils, the trucks that arrive at our sites bring just one coil. In our own facilities, we cut the steel at high speed and high precision. 
The discs are cut in a special pattern, minimizing the waste of this process. The next. With a few videos, you will see how the discs are loaded into the top and bottom forming process. Here's a robot that takes the disc from a stack. A press forms the disc into tops and bottoms. In the next step, we punch the holes that will become the drum openings. And inside those openings, we press the flanges that have the thread for the two plugs. And finally, we apply the seaming compound. That compound becomes the liquid tight seal between the drum components. As a first step in making the cylindrical body of the drum, we roll the steel sheet and weld it together. This is a robust and proven concept. Yet over time, the energy consumption of this welding process has reduced significantly by applying modern electronics. The picture in the center of this page is showing the result of a destructive quality test. During the day, we do a few of those severe tests to confirm that the welding process settings are optimal. Here you see how these processes Sorry. After welding, there are three steps in the forming the drum body. The flange is needed to connect the body with the top and the bottom. The beads and the corrugations are needed for the mechanical performance of these drums. Without those drums, without those, the drums would be very unstable in transport and handling. Also, these shapes help to increase the drum's resistance against vacuum collapse. Such a collapse could happen after hot filling and the drum cooling down after closing. Next, here you see how these processes look in reality. First, making of the flange. We push out of the beads. And the last step in body forming is creating the corrugations. These corrugations are only needed for thinner steel these are critical for the performance of drums made out of any steel thinner than one millimeter. Next. Connecting the drum body with the top and the body is called seaming. It is the next big step in drum manufacturing. All the parts are brought together fully automatic and the part flanges are rolled together with great precision. Tool pressure and movements are continuously monitored to achieve a liquid tight seam with a high strength. The assembled drum needs to be protected against rust, and of course you want to have your drum in your preferred color. So we spray paint the drums at line speed. Single color blue in this example, we can do multiple colors at the same speed in one go. The paints comply with environmental legislation, we bent heavy metals in the paint already decades ago. Great reductions were made in the reduction of emitting solvents in the outside air, either by incineration or by applying water-based paints. In many of our facilities, oh, sorry, wrong slide, a wide range of filling products require the drums to have an internal coating. This video shows how this coating is applied prior to the drum assembly. The super high speed disc is really throwing the coating to the inside surface of the drum body. The coatings consist of resins with special chemical resistance. The, the, there are various resins that get specially selected to protect your filling goods. In many of our facilities, the superior quality trishoe plugs are applied to the drums automatically. If a drum has an internal coating, also the plug is coated, like it shows here. I will talk more about the trishoe closure system later. Drums with a removable top are closed with lever rings. Next. Our leak testers are capable to measure small traces of helium gas. We inject that helium prior to closing the drum. The technology of helium leak testing is widely used in many industries. 
For example, for testing pacemakers, the sensitivity of this test method easily meets the international test requirements for packaging specially designed for dangerous goods. Every single drum is tested. Early in the process, we already painted your drums in your preferred color. Here is another decoration option. You can have your company logo, a picture, or text screen printed on your drum. Some of the drive locations can even offer the two color sp screen prints like Alain demonstrated before. Now that the drums have been made according to your specifications, it's ready for shipment. Drums can be loaded one by one in trailers or in special containers. Before shipment, we can also pelletize the drums and ship units of four, eight, or 12 drums on a pellet. Steel drums are suitable for the transport and storage of hazardous filling goods. The Grive seam construction and the special treasure closure system outperform all the international packaging performance requirements. These requirements include some severe tests that we execute daily. Here you see how a drum is dropped from almost two meters. It gets seriously deformed and yet it is still leak tight. Thank you for your time spent with me learning how we make our steel drums. Philippe, I hand over to you. Thank you, Berend. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. So uh, Alain has explained you uh, more about the, the drums. What is a steel drum, the different type of drum that we have. Uh, Berend uh, explained to you how do we uh, manufacture uh, a steel drum. Uh, and obviously, uh, you are buying the drums, and we, uh, of course, we prefer you buy the drums from us. So, uh, hopefully, I will give you good reasons uh, to do so. I must say that uh, uh, Grife has been in the steel drum business for many, many years. Uh, we can even say many decades. And uh, we uh, supply, we manufacture and supply millions of drums of those steel drums every month. Um, all across our facility. So I would say that probably one of the main reasons is uh, to buy from us is our recognized expertise and we already thank you all for buying so many drums from us. So if we move to the next slide, I think the first reason of this expertise is our uh, larger, uh, largest range of steel drums. Alain has already, let's say, explained in, in details uh, what are those drums about. Uh, uh, basically, uh, what Alain has explained is a full range of the steel drum which is existing in the world. And this full range uh, basically is produced by Grife. Um, so not everywhere, not in every plant, of course, um, but whatever you need some very standard drums, then all of our plants will be able to uh, deliver you those drums. But then if you, are, you have the need for very specific drums, we can also deliver those specific drums from the different plans that we have uh, doing those drums. So I won't necessarily repeat what Alain has, uh, has been saying about the different type of drums, but be aware that there are some very specific uh, solution on top of the one which are uh, presented. So you can reach out to, uh, let's say, any of our uh, salespeople uh, and they will guide you uh, to find you the right, um, the right solutions. So we can move to the next slide. Um, those drums are, uh, let's say, as much as necessary uh, standardized for your needs. Uh, and this is very important for uh, the, our international customers, okay? Because uh, clearly uh, what you want is to make sure that you have same drum specifications uh, in uh, uh, everywhere in the world, that you have the same external colors, uh, at Grife, and specifically our trisher operation, we produce our own paint and lacquers. Uh, the uh, standardization of the lacquer is definitely a must, as Alain has explained. Uh, let's say the drum compatibility uh, with your product is uh, given by the, the, the linings. So on this one, we can ensure that if you need an RDL44, for example, um, you will make sure that you have that RDL44 available everywhere. 
the Trisher uh, closing system is the only one we use uh, and that we put on all our drums. Uh, and the last point is uh, the branding side. So uh, that was also explained. Uh, I can illustrate this for uh, specifically the, the, the lubricant industry, where we know that counterfeiting is, um, is, a, is, a, is a big issue. Uh, and so one of the things that we do, we are making sure with our customer that whatever printing uh, we put on a drum, we inform our customers to make sure that uh, there is no possible anti-counterfeiting and that customers are uh, well aware of every printed drums uh, we do for them. So this standardization is not a must. Okay, it depends very much on uh, what the customer wants, but this is definitely a possibility uh, that we offer to every customer willing to get this at the international level. So if we move forward, uh, let's say on reasons to, uh, to, uh, to buy from us, uh, of course, uh, Grife over those uh, uh, big number of years, uh, we have developed products according to the, the needs of uh, our customers. So you have here uh, some illustrations of dedicated solutions. Uh, this is definitely not, uh, let's say, the, the, the illustration of our full portfolio of dedicated solution. But the automatic unloading, for example, is a, is a good example of a development we have made for different customers, uh, focusing on safety and definitely not willing to get their employees uh, uh, loading and unloading drums one by one for obvious safety reasons. So we have a different range of automatic unloading solutions, which we can present in more details to you. Clean drums, uh, of course, uh, very often uh, customers uh, looking for, uh, for cleanliness uh, look more at, uh, at plastic products, but this is not always possible for every product, uh, like for example, the lubricant industry uh, or the paint industry. And here again, we have developed solutions for both uh, let's say, uh, making our drum cleaner, but also uh, measuring online the cleanliness, uh, the internal cleanliness of our drums, uh, and so that we can produce you uh, any necessary reports uh, that customers might need uh, for their own uh, customers. Knockdown drums is a specific solution which has been developed mostly for uh, uh, regions, let's say, or countries where the market is not big enough to justify uh, a new line or brand new line of, uh, of lastly drum and the knockdown drums uh, allows to uh, basically ship more, two, more than 2,000 uh, let's say bodies and uh, tops and bottoms which are then assembled in at, either at customer sites or at drive sites and then ship to the closer customer. Um, we have also logistic solution like the vendor uh, in, in inventory management I won't go much more, uh, let's say, in details on, on this, but this is the idea that we can manage, uh, let's say, your stock, we can manage your demand, uh, and we do this for many of our big uh, customers. Uh, the track and trace uh, systems, uh, which is not just for uh, uh, steel drums, but also available, for example, for, for IBC. This is something whose demand is, uh, is growing, uh, and so we have also developed some solutions uh, uh, I, either by ourselves or with Trisher. And so we have a range of solutions which can be made available. The one which is here presented is via QR code, uh, where you can put any information in the QR code that, that then you can track uh, along your supply chain. So this is definitely part of our expertise. Uh, the fact that we serve many customers all over the globe means that we hear about many, many needs. And so uh, we make sure uh, that we follow our uh, vision to be the best customer service company and that we deploy uh, those solutions for you. So this is really the part of the product. Um, then if we move to the next slide, uh, uh, of course, all of this would not make sense without our uh, global footprint. Uh, so our presence is 72 large drum plants and 22 small intermediate drums plants all over the globe, about 40 countries in the four, in the four regions. Um, so one 
definitively of the key advantage for you is uh, uh, the backup solutions and the recent uh, period or the current period we are experiencing uh, has proven the importance of uh, offering backup solutions to our customers. With the COVID, uh, we have been, uh, uh, let's say, kind of forced to activate some of our backup solutions between the different operations. So we have set up systems internally where uh, each plant has a backup uh, in another plant uh, to ensure the business continuity. Uh, but the global footprint is not just about the availability of, of products all over the globe. It's also the availability of our people. Uh, so we talk about uh, dedicated customer service and commercial people in all those countries. So we have salespeople speaking your languages. Uh, they are present in all the regions, all the countries, and so ready to support you. So this is uh, uh, definitely a, uh, a key advantage that uh, we can offer uh, to you. And in terms of people and expertise, uh, definitively, uh, this is also our technical expertise. Uh, we have a worldwide and regional technical groups uh, whose objective is to support customers, of course, on any of their technical needs, claims, or uh, any uh, other technical requests, but also to support our business on development and innovation. So uh, if we move to the next slide, uh, what is of course critical, uh, we pack mostly dangerous goods, uh, as it has been said. Uh, so our commitment to quality and safety is critical. Uh, so what you can get from uh, Grif is a, a global quality and safety policy. Uh, no, and I can come back uh, all over the globe. Um, Yes, thank you. Um, it's uh, with our system is ensuring that the best practices are shared uh, across our operations. As it has been said, packaging advice, which is absolutely uh, uh, critical. I remember that each customer is responsible um, for, uh, let's say, is responsible for the packaging that they use. So packaging advice is, from a quality perspective is, uh, is critical and is here to guide you to the choice of the right packaging for your product. Uh, but also, uh, let's say innovation is, is uh, definitely part, uh, part of this. And we measured, let's say, the satisfaction of our customers uh, via two indexes, which are monitored one on a monthly basis, the customer service index, and another one on a yearly basis, the net promoter score. So all of this is, of course, supported by key solutions. Okay, so the germ helium testing. Uh, is something that Berent has uh, uh, presented, which is uh, present in all our operations, has become a, 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 a manufacturing standard um, for our industry and was developed by, uh, by Greif um, uh, many years ago. Standard Dome Bottom is a, a classic solution that we use in combination with light gauges to uh, avoid stress cracking during the transportation of drums. Uh, why the image has disappeared, nevertheless, uh, we also develop high quality decorations uh, uh, to also follow some of the recent needs to use drums to promote the brands. And the BPA linings is also another illustration of uh, specific products we uh, recently developed, uh, as Alain has explained. So uh, moving to the next uh, slide, uh, something also which is uh, very specific to Grife. Uh, is that our presence all over the globe means also a knowledge of the market evolution. Um, and there are still many parts of the world where uh, there is a growing need of uh, uh, large steel drum, of steel drums, not, not, not just large steel drums, sorry. Um, and so you have here the illustration of uh, three big uh, new plants uh, we uh, opened in the, in the last five years basically to follow customers and to keep on, let's say, offering uh, our products in uh, more parts of the, of the world. So this is something we have been doing for, for decades. And uh, we believe that if you have some super large needs, uh, we are more than uh, uh, happy and ready to uh, uh, answer to those ones, including by opening some new operations. Next slide, Alain. So uh, I could not finish this part without talking about sustainability. 
okay, which is absolutely uh, vital to our uh, company and to our strategy. So by working with Grive, basically, you will work with a company which is among the top companies recognized for sustainability in the world by the different organism, organization like uh, uh, CDP, Together for Sustainability, Ecovalis. So this is a guarantee for you. We know that you need to audit, uh, let's say, your customers now about sustainability. So you have the guarantee that with Grive, uh, you will work with a top company from that point of view. Then we have uh, different type of offers. One of the ones we want to emphasize here is our green tool. So the green tool is, a, is an, a solution we have developed so that you can understand in details uh, the environmental footprint of your uh, industrial packaging consumption. So if you want to know what is environmental footprint of your consumption of 10,000 large steel drum plus uh, 5,000 IBC plus uh, 20,000 jerry can, the green tool will offer this to you and then we can work with you uh, to tell you how to improve this environmental footprint, um, how to uh, uh, use different packaging, how to down gauge, lightweight uh, the different packaging so that you improve this footprint. We also offer uh, collection and reconditioning either by ourselves uh, or working with partners. Um, so this is something we know uh, also uh, really well and we can offer solutions. Another point of sustainability, which sometimes is uh, not so much uh, uh, thought about, is the fact that our footprint means that we are close to your operation in most of the part of the world. And being close to your operation means that there is less, less transport to deliver your drums uh, to you. So uh, definitely this is also, uh, as a green tool uh, uh, would tell us, uh, also an important part on the environmental footprint. In terms of dedicated solutions, uh, we have a range of solutions. The down gauging is probably the most common one in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, sustainability in the sense that the biggest part of the environmental footprint comes from the production of the raw material itself. And so the less raw material you use, uh, the more environmentally friendly will be uh, a steel drum. So uh, this is, let's say, the, 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 the full range of reasons to buy from us. So if I would summarize them, Alan, next slide, please. Uh, basically what we want to do, I mean, it's a combination of our vision, the best uh, customer service company in the world and our uh, uh, brand uh, uh, mantra, which is packaging success together. So when we combine these, what we want is to make Grife a company easy to work with you. Okay, so easy to get the product that you want, the large range, the dedicated solution, uh, the fact that we are close to your location. We want to make to get those products easy because they are top quality. Okay, uh, so I talk of course of the quality itself, but also making sure that with our uh, 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 people and expertise, we offer fast resolution to uh, existing issues, and that also we can offer the standardization. Easy to work means that you can rely on continuous support from Grive, say in technical people for uh, larger accounts. We offer uh, one single sales contact. Um, you have also, as I've hopefully demonstrated, our large expertise uh, worldwide and our commitment to innovation uh, to offer new solutions. And not uh, last but not least, uh, you can work with a, a sustainable supplier. So fully have convinced you. Uh, and so I think now we can move to the question and answer, Sherry. Thank you very much to all of our panelists uh, for your wealth of knowledge and sharing with this audience. Let's start a few questions and group them into sections. Um, let's start with I think that's a, a great place to point. One of the questions Sherry, we have a problem with your line. We cannot hear you very well. I apologize for that. Can you, is it any better? Yes. Okay. I was just going to try and group the questions into sections, starting with sustainability. And the first one was, are drums recyclable, which I think we addressed a couple of times. Um, if we can't be reconditioned, we can definitely recycle steel. But regards to engaging, down gauging 
people um, throughout the world and you know more specifically maybe Brian you can assist in the United States our efforts to provide some down gauging in the steel drum. Thanks Cheryl. Um, so currently in uh, North America we're working on a project to make uh, the same level of drums that we make uh, across the globe and the, the lighter gauge. Uh, our current target is the all point eight drum. Uh, we're working on the equipment modifications in several facilities uh, and we'll be able to provide those drums in uh, North America uh, in uh, Q1 of 2021. You can see this for us. Is the green tool available to all drive customers? Uh, Sherry, can you repeat the question? Uh, we definitely have an issue with your the quality of the sound. Okay. It was regards to the green tool. Is it available to all of our Grice customers and is there a cost associated with that? I can answer this one. Yes, uh, the green tool is available to, uh, to all customers. Uh, this is also available for uh, uh, our full set of uh, rigid industrial packaging, uh, steel drum, uh, plastic drums, fiber drums, IBCs. Uh, we also do it for uh, FPS drums. Um, let's say and the cost is, uh, is basically, uh, this is a time we're going to spend with you. So uh, like usually there is uh, enough value in, uh, in working on this and in working on, uh, on continuous improvement and win-win situation so that uh, we can do this uh, at, uh, at, uh, at no cost. Thank you. With regards to the printing process, Alain, maybe you could talk a little bit. They mentioned complex silk screening and can you control the welding position versus the bungs at your production facility? So when you're printing, um, are you able to um, control where, the, where they're printing on the drum? Uh, yes, in a screening, uh, we have a captors on the screening machine, which allow us to place the screening exactly at the, at the right uh, place. So just to avoid the welding zone. So in most of our plants, we can avoid the welding zone of the screening. And for the printed drums, it's uh, quite busy because we are printing the, sh the steel sheet before we weld it. So for sure, the welding is never in the middle of the, of the print. And while we offer the screening in all of our locations around the world, the complex, the Drum 360, do we offer that in all regions or when will that be expanding outside of Europe? Yeah, uh, the complex screening means uh, the capability to, uh, to print two different colors in screening on each band. It's uh, just uh, when we have a market for that. So it's uh, limited to the, some uh, countries. Uh, and uh, today it's mostly in, uh, in Europe, but we can do it also, I think, in some uh, plants in Africa. For the printed drums, uh, today we have developed uh, this capability fully in uh, Europe and North Africa. So we have uh, already two plants able to print sheets. And so we are distributing the sheets today in Europe and North Africa. And we are starting now to investigate the other regions. So we will start in the coming weeks to uh, certify some plants in other regions, in, uh, in both Americas and in uh, China and Singapore as well, uh, to develop this capability. Thank you. Could you go back to slide number nine, Alan? There's a couple of questions regarding the lining, and it might be nice to show them that slide while we, while we answer those questions. Um, uh, the first one was, what is the difference between the epoxy phenolic and the phenoxy phenolic. And I think this might chart might help you answer that question a little bit again. Yeah. Aaron? Uh, the epoxy phenolic and uh, phenoxy phenolic, there are basically different molecule, molecular structures. Uh, they come with different uh, levels of flexibility. They come with different levels of chemical resistance. So uh, the application, the choice between the two will be very much dependent on uh, the filling product. And our chemists, uh, we uh, can always advise which is the most suitable uh, mix of those uh, resins. And then Bert, maybe you can expand a little bit about the term mechanical performance. You know, why, why, do, we, why do we label that with that? called mechanical performance? Uh, that is actually goes back to what I mentioned before, that is the flexibility of the coating. Um, some coatings are more flexible than others. Uh, let's assume that um, 
drums are exposed to uh, some denting during uh, transport and handling. Uh, then there is a difference. Uh, the epoxy coatings, they are more flexible than uh, the phenolic, the phenoxy phenolics. And then is there a difference between linings or internal coating? That is actually the same. Great. Maybe Brian, maybe you could address this. Are drums reach or ROHS compliant? Um, I think that's more of a European uh, yes. definition, so um, Baron's probably better to answer that. Thanks. Yes, it is European. It stands for registration, evaluation, authorization, and restriction, restriction of chemicals. Uh, yes, we are compliant. Uh, every facility in Europe has to comply with local uh, legislation. In the, the actually in the finished goods that we ship to you, uh, there is uh, uh, no real, uh, um, no more uh, free chemicals. Uh, everything has been uh, dried and, and, and cured. Uh, we handle chemicals uh, in our own process, and we comply with uh, all the European legislation, and we uh, take care. Uh, reducing the, the hazards of those chemicals by either taking the, the sources away, uh, example, using water-based paints, uh, or if that's not possible, we're using uh, personal protective equipment for our employees. Thank you. So one of the other questions with regard to, do we manufacture the drum components in-house? So all of the lids, the bungs, the rings, et cetera, how much of that are we producing in-house? I would say 99.5%. We, we, we produce our tops, we produce our bottoms, uh, we make the drum bodies. Uh, then uh, you have seen uh, that we uh, uh, put the trisure plugs uh, on the top of the drum and these trisure plugs are also produced uh, by uh, um, uh, our trisure facilities, which is a uh, part of the drive company. Great. A couple of, um, of our specialty products, there's a couple of questions here. One is, where do we produce the conical drums? Um, and they're assuming in Europe. And then with regards to the conical drums, um, is there an inherent transportation cost and storage implications? I, I guess that's they're saying this is the reason why conical drums are not more widely used option, or why are they not a more widely used option, since they seem to be um, you know, a very good solution for Storing and transporting. Alon, do you yeah, want to talk to that? I can answer this one. Uh, so, first question: where, where are they? Well, let's say the, the the conical drums are by far mostly used for uh, uh, the food industry, and specifically for uh, first of all for the tomato paste industry, um, and so uh, and then for uh, the fruit industry. So, lemon, orange, and a full, full range of, uh, of products. So this is why we, uh, we mostly find the production of those drums in the region where those, the, the, the tomato is produced. Uh, so uh, we have a, a operation in Portugal, we have operation in Spain, in Italy, in Greece, in Turkey, uh, in Chile. Um, and I think this is it. Perhaps I'm, I'm forgetting uh, one, but uh, this is about it. Um, we have some few customers uh, using it for specific application, uh, for industrial application, okay? Uh, the, the biggest limitation is in fact uh, the ability to, get, to, to be able to get the same UN homologation level than with uh, standard drums. So this is, uh, this is the main reason, but uh, if, uh, if you are interested, uh, let's say, to, uh, to investigate conical drums for uh, your own application, we, we are also doing it uh, for a, a, a small part of our conical business, but we are doing it. So we need to investigate in details what would be the, the product uh, that the customer would, uh, would like to, uh, to put in those drugs. I know, Berend, if you want to add something on this? No, that's okay. Uh, the only if this helps, uh, two more countries making conical drums are Egypt and uh, Russia. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
while we're on specialty drums, there's a question about someone would like us to elaborate more on the knockdown drums, if we could share a little bit more information about those. Yeah, Brent, I think you can share perhaps a, more of a technical, from a technical perspective on, on the knockdown drums. Yes. So the knockdown drums, we prepare a top, uh, we prepare a bottom, uh, we uh, pre-decorate uh, the drum body. And uh, those drum bodies, they are, um, uh, I have no, uh, no picture here to explain that. Alain, maybe you can help. Yes. Uh, let me check where is it. Oh, you have it in my part, Alain, in the, the slide on dedicated solutions around yeah. 30 That's here. I was before, yeah. Here. Yes. Yes. So on the, on the left uh, uh, bottom of this uh, page, you can see that we can make what we call the kidney shaped uh, drum bodies. And by doing that, we can uh, push a number of these bodies together. And then we ship uh, sets of tops, bottoms, and these drum bodies uh, as, uh, as kits uh, to customers. Um, we typically do that for uh, uh, smaller volumes uh, at, at very, very long distances. And there is some limitations in uh, what you can do with those drums. Uh, they're, they're not suitable for the most uh, hazardous goods, uh, but perfectly fine for uh, filling goods like uh, lubrication oil and a, a, a few others. So long distance, small volumes, and that is the perfect solution. And our last specialty question is with regards to where to produce the composite drums and are the specs the same at each site? Uh, the composite drums are, oh, sorry. Yes, the composite drums are produced in uh, every region. So, uh, and uh, uh, not in all, every plant, but in every region we can produce composite drums. And so most of the time we are also producing ourselves the plastic uh, drums, which is inserted in the steel drums. And so they are available in every region, in most of the regions. Uh, and again, they are really uh, dedicated to, uh, generally speaking, to very dangerous products, uh, which are not compatible with steel. So which needs uh, plastic uh, drums to be compatible uh, for the chemicals. Uh, but uh, the plastic drums is not uh, strong enough uh, because the product is so dangerous and then the steel drums is giving the, the strength and uh, the, the mechanical performance. Thank you. So we have another technical question. It says, our product has proven to build CO2 pressure over time. Is there a way to attach a pressure release valve to a drum somehow? Brian or Baron? Yeah, so the, <clears throat> obviously we want to understand what, you, and the customer would need to understand what they're releasing, but they're within the TriSure product range. Uh, there are different uh, fittings that can be installed in, uh, in the bongs of the drum uh, that can have pressure relief mechanisms in them. Uh, more commonly that's used in our uh, plastic drums, not so much in the steel drums. But potentially, again, uh, as Philippe said, if, if there's something of interest or a situation, uh, you can contact us for, we need to get a little bit more specifics on it. But there are products in the TriShare range that are pressure releasing. And I think that's gonna, we have another question that says, if you fill your 200 liter drum with a warm product closed too soon, vacuum is on the drum during transport, especially maybe in the winter months, is the integrity of the drum still intact? Um, I believe this would probably be a similar question to that. Which... Yeah, I don't know if you want that, Baron, or Alon, but the answer is yeah, yes, the integrity is yes. maintained. Um, there can be some situation in drum styles that are less compatible. Um, that's why we, uh, as Baron explained, in the forming process for the drums, we will change the uh, application of the bead style in the drums based on the customer usage. Um, and for that particular reason, uh, for sure, in our light gauge drums, you would get a W, what we would call in, in North America, WB with the corrugation, so we can get the lighter gauge, but still maintain that uh, rigidity uh, or integrity of the drum under vacuum. 
There's a couple other technical questions that I think would probably be best if we answer offline. So we'll make sure that someone follows up with you um, when, this, when this session is over. One final question on the composite drums. Are they considered to be static dissipative? I think I can answer that question. Actually, I think uh, we would also have to follow up with a more formal request there. Uh, consider is the right word. Okay. Yes. Great. Great. I think that that brings us um, to a close. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I want to thank everyone for participating in today's event. Before we close, um, we did ask quite a bit of, you know, we provided quite a bit of information and we wanted like to know if you would like a great representative to follow up with you after this event is over and we'll be, you know, we'll feel free. We'll reach out to you if you have any other questions about that. So I'll leave this pulled up for a quick second. And we're going to take a short summer break from our global webinar series. You'll find some regional ones offered in your areas and maybe local languages coming soon as we expand these webinar series around the world. So stay up to date with us. We encourage you to follow us on social media to stay up to date on the Grife webinar series and events and engage with us in all things industrial packaging. We encourage you to reach out to us. As we said, we have a, a lot of panelists on here. We have a lot of experts around the world who are willing to help you and work together with you to solve your industrial packaging needs. So we want to thank you and for attending today, and we wish you a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. Thanks, everyone.